Alright, in this video, I want to talk about use layout effect in React.js. And most importantly, I want to talk about how use layout effect can help prevent the flickering UI effect that you usually see in websites sometimes, or that you usually see while working with React.js especially. So basically, when you work with React and you're working on a particular page which has some UI components, then you might notice sometimes that there is some sort of a flickering effect, meaning that for a few seconds, a UI will appear to be positioned in some place else and then a few seconds after it will go to some other position once the entire page content loads so i'm going to discuss about how the use layout effect helps prevent this issue this flickering of the ui issue and how and when you should use it as compared to use effect so the best place to get started with use layout effect is obviously in the react docs itself so over here you can see uh, first of all it says a pitfall that use layout effect can hurt performance so prefer use effect whenever possible so let's try to figure out when to use use layout effect and when to use use effect so if i go a bit down over here you can see we have the reference this is call use layout effect to perform the layout measurements before the browser repaints the screen so don't worry before i dive deep just know this much that use layout effect syntax wise is exactly the same as use effect all right just keep that in mind first so as you can see right here just pay attention to this for now uh, this is the use layout effect which is the same as use effect it also takes a dependency array over here based on which this part can render again all right so over here it talks about the parameters that use layout effect accepts so which is nothing but the function with your effects logic which is nothing but this callback function and the second parameter is nothing but the dependencies which is nothing but this array over here so pretty similar to use effect so now if i go down uh, you see we get the caveats so so basically meaning certain warnings of how use layout effect can behave in certain scenarios so this is a hook so you can only call it at the top level of your component or your own hooks well it's similar to use effect again you can you can't call it inside loops or conditions if you need that extract a component and move the effect there all right so similar to any hook in react use layout effect hook can also not be called inside loops or conditions and it should be defined at the top level so all of this part is pretty similar to use effect we don't have to go in depth with the caveats what we need to focus on mainly is the usage part but still let's just quickly read through this so this is when strict mode is on react will run one extra development only setup plus cleanup cycle so this just means that in your development mode your use layout effect will run twice because that's what strict mode does and then if some of your dependencies are objects or functions defined inside the component there's a risk that they will cause the effect to rerun more than more often than needed so basically if here you had some function or object rather than some values then a drawback of adding functions or object in the dependency over here for use layout effect or use effect as well is that in react when the state updates on every re-render a new reference to the function or object is created which means that this dependency will see that even though the value of the object is same just because the state has re-rendered it could see that because of the re-render the function or the object has a new reference to it causing this use layout effect to rerun again so be very careful while adding objects or function values over here in the dependency array so you can see it says to fix this remove unnecessary object and function dependencies you can also extract state updates and non-reactive logic outside of your effect basically you could create that directly over here instead of putting that dependency here and causing multiple re-renders or basically an infinite loop who knows all right so apart from that effects can run only on the client all right the code inside use layout effect and all state updates scheduled from it block the browser from repainting the screen now this part is extremely essential when used excessively this makes your app slow when possible prefer use effect so the thing with use layout effect is in react once the use layout effect has been completely executed only after that the browser is going to render the dom this means if you have some expensive calculation in the use layout effect over here then until this expensive calculation hasn't been completed the dom will not be rendered so this in some cases can hurt performance because in use effect what happens is first the component is mounted meaning that the dom is visible to the user and then after the mounting the code inside the use effect runs but in use layout effect until the logic within the use layout effect hasn't completed the dom will not be visible or painted onto the screen so the content won't be shown to the user until the use layout effect logic hasn't been completed 
all right so that's why be very careful while using use layout effect don't just put it everywhere instead of use effect use it only when necessary and when to use it we'll see that soon so if i go down to this section now the use it section you can see the usage says measuring layout before the browser repaints the screen all right so most components don't need to know the position and size on the screen to decide what to render they only return some gsx yeah most components they just return some gsx they just have some components some lists or some buttons etc etc but mostly you don't usually deal with components let's say buttons or inputs or cards wherein you have to know the size of the button or input or card before the dom has loaded in order to position the component accordingly most components we just return it as it is we either follow a column like fashion or a row like fashion but in most cases we do not ever land in a scenario where we have to know where the component exactly has to be positioned and what size it has to have before it's rendered mostly we just render it in a row or column like fashion and so on but in cases where you would need to know the position and size of the component to be placed exactly on the screen where you need it to in those cases you might need use layout effect so as you can see here sometimes that's not enough imagine a tooltip this is a great example for use layout effect imagine a tooltip that appears next to some element on hover so tooltips are basically if i hover on anything there are some cases right where if i hover on something then extra information comes up so for example if i just search for tooltip let's say i click here and then let's say I hover over here so this is a tooltip this thing that comes up on hovering all right so back to the article so imagine a tooltip that appears next to some element on hover if there's enough space the tooltip should appear above the element but if it doesn't fit it should appear below the element in order to render the tooltip at the right final position you need to know its height whether it fits at the top so basically what they're saying is imagine a scenario where let's say you have a text and if you hover on it a tooltip should be visible so the condition here is if there is space above the tooltip only then the tooltip should come up above the content you're hovering on but if there's no space above the tooltip then it should accordingly adjust and the tooltip should appear below the element you're hovering on so how do you do this well to do this you need to render in two passes First, render the tooltip anywhere, even with the wrong position, measure its height and decide where to place the tooltip. Then render the tooltip again in the correct place. So basically first just render the tooltip anywhere you want and then once the DOM loads up the content, you see if the element you're hovering on, if there's any space above it, calculate that, see if there's space above it and that calculation has to be in accordance with the size of the tooltip. So if the space that's above the element you're hovering on is more than the final size of the tooltip you want to display then that means there's space above the tooltip so if that's the case if there is space then then just render the tooltip again in the correct place but in this case you're seeing that first we are rendering the tooltip in the wrong position we are calculating its height after the dom has loaded we are calculating the height above the element we are hovering on to see if there's space on the top and then if there is ample height if there is enough height then we are rendering the tooltip in the correct place so there is a flicker here because first there is first it goes to the wrong position then it comes to the correct place so as you can see here all of this needs to happen before the browser repaints the screen all right because when you're dealing with tooltips for example the tooltip we just i just showed you now tooltip so when you're dealing with these tooltips you want that this tooltip should directly come on the position it's meant to be shown at for example imagine if this tooltip was first at the wrong position and then it goes up that wouldn't look so good right because it would look very glitchy and flickery now if you did this with use effect that is exactly what would happen you would have a flicker effect but with the use layout effect something else happens with the use layout effect we don't get the flickering effect we get the tooltip to be rendered in its final position itself because we only get the final result so if i go back to the article you can see here all of this needs to happen before the browser repaints the screen you don't want the user to see the tooltip moving so call use layout effect to perform the layout measurements before the browser repaints the screen so the expensive calculation which is performing the layout measurements to see if there's space available on top as compared to the size of the tooltip do all that calculation in the use layout effect and then if it's there and then set the tooltip position accordingly whether top or bottom and then allow the dom to be rendered and when it's rendered the tooltip will directly appear either at the top or at the bottom and the user won't see the flickering effect so basically a use layout effect over here imagine that we got the final height and then we set the tooltip height as height 
And if you notice here, initially the tooltip height is zero because we don't know whether it's gonna be at the top or bottom. Then once we get to know that yes, there's space on top, we set the tooltip height and then we render it on top or bottom anywhere which is appropriate. But basically, it was at zero first, then it got some height over here. Don't care about the remaining logic. We are just trying to understand the underlying principle between use layout effect and that why it's used exactly. So if I go here, you can see here's how this works step by step. Tooltip renders with the initial height tooltip height zero so the tooltip may be wrongly positioned so react places it in the dom and runs the code in use layout effect so react has just placed it in the dom it's not painted yet on the dom it's just placed it and then it runs the code in the use layout effect where your use layout effect measures the height of the tooltip content and triggers an immediate re-render so whatever the height is within the tooltip content it measures it because based on that it can compare it with the height above the element you're hovering on to see if there's enough space and then it triggers an immediate re-render tooltip renders again with the real tooltip height so the so the tooltip is correctly positioned so with the real tooltip height attained we can position it up or above based on the logic that must be somewhere written in the code then react updates it in the dom and finally and the browser finally displays the tooltip so the part of the code responsible for displaying the tooltip is in the use layout effect and the browser won't repaint the screen until this part has been achieved. So even though it's wrongly positioned at first, the browser won't render the tooltip at all because the tooltip rendering is being controlled by the use layout effect. So even though the tooltip with the zero height is placed in the DOM, it's not painted to the screen, it's not shown. Then the use layout effect is run right away. Once this has been completed, we get the data, we get the position and the positioning has been done. Then once that entire process is over, the tooltip is finally allowed to be visible. So the React updates it in the DOM and the browser finally displays the tooltip. So which prevents it from flickering, which allows the tooltip to be directly shown at the final position it was intended to be shown. So just to give you an example to show you how this works, if you go down here, you can see hover over the buttons below and see how the tooltip adjusts its position depending on where it fits. But you won't get to see it properly over here because if I just hover it, first of all, you can see that here above this button, there's no space because of, because of the content of the tooltip being a lot. So if I hover here, it adjusts and it shows it at the bottom. And you see there's no flickering. When I hover, it shows it at the bottom. Similarly, if I hover here, the tooltip comes up over here because there is still space above this button. Similarly, if I hover here, the tooltip comes up above the element, above the button because there's space above the button and no space below the button. All right, but here you don't get to see the difference between use effect and use layout effect. So what I'll do is if I go down here, you can see they have said, notice that even though the tooltip component has to render in two passes, first with tooltip height initialized to zero, and then with the real measured height, you only see the final result. This is why you need use layout effect instead of use effect for this example. Let's look at the difference in detail below. All right, so just know that here the tooltip height is initially set to zero, but still we don't get to see it flicker from here to here or here to here or something like that. We get to see it directly in its final position. And that's because of this use layout effect. And we will exactly see why that's happening. So over here it says use layout effect blocks the browser from repainting. All right, so React guarantees that the code inside use layout effect and any state updates scheduled inside it will be processed before the browser repaints the screen. So that's why React says that this can also cause performance issues. So be careful while using it because it can really pause the repainting of the screen. So if there's expensive calculation, the user won't see anything on the page until that has been completed. And don't worry, I'll show you that as well. So this lets you render the tooltip, measure it all while nothing's rendered on the screen. So before anything's rendered on the DOM, it renders the tooltip with the zero height, it measures it, and then it re-renders the tooltip again without the user noticing the first extra render. In other words, use layout effect blocks the browser from painting. All right, so here, if I go over here, you can see here we have use layout effect. This is the same example as above. But now just to show the difference between use layout effect and use effect, if I just click over here, where it says use effect does not block the browser because in use effect, first the component gets mounted, the DOM gets rendered, then the use effect runs. All right, so the calculation and all happens after the DOM is rendered. So here they have said, but with use effect instead of use layout effect, if you're on a slower device, you might notice that sometimes the tooltip flickers and you briefly see its initial position before the corrected position. So my device is not slow, so right now you won't see any flickering effect because my device is pretty fast, 
but on slower devices you will notice the flickering or let's say i had a lot of browser tabs and a lot many other applications open and my device was running slow then in those cases you would actually notice the flickering and to simulate that behavior what the react team has done they have written over here to make the bug easier to reproduce this version adds an artificial delay during rendering react will let the browser paint the screen before it processes the state update inside use effect as a result the tooltip flickers all right so even though now my device is fast they have added a way to simulate a slower device so here you can see this artificially slows down rendering this just means that if i was on a slower device then this is what would happen so if i um before i show you remember we are using use effect right now so if i hover you see first it stays at the bottom or right above the element and then it goes up let me show you again you see there's this flicker here as well and here as well all right so on slower devices we get to see this flicker however if i just replaced this use effect with nothing but use layout effect notice what's going to happen if i write use layout effect and i also add it over here in the imports now you'll notice what happens so now even though we're still simulating a slower device you'll see what happens if i hover here you see the tooltip directly comes right on top of the button here as well it goes right below it and here it goes right above this element so this means even in slower devices it's not going to flicker when you use use layout effect before the tooltip is visible it's going to pause rendering anything on the screen it's going to pause painting the browser and until all the calculations are done only then it's going to show the tooltip so it blocks the painting of the tooltip until all the calculations within the use layout effect have been completed again if i hover here you see even though there's a delay it doesn't flicker it directly comes where it's intended to be visible which is above this element so there is no flicker when we use use layout effect as compared to use effect so if i go here edit this example to use layout effect and observe that it blocks the paint even if rendering is slowed down and that is what i exactly showed you just now all right so note rendering in two passes and blocking the browser hurts performance try to avoid this when you can all right and rest everything is just troubleshooting and issues you might fall into so this was all in all about use layout effect and how it can prevent the flickering of the ui in your screen now before we end this video i'll show you one more example where let's say i go over here you can see i have this simple button over here increment and this use layout effect over here so in this case i'm just rendering this part over here this simple thing so in this case this button is going to depend on whether the use layout effect calculation has completed or not in the react docs example we saw we already had buttons rendered and the tooltip was dependent on the use layout effect so that's why we were already able to see the buttons being rendered from before but the tooltip the rendering of the tooltip dependent on the use layout effect on the calculations within the use layout effect so that's why the rendering of the tooltip was blocked until the calculation within the use layout effect was completed allowing the tooltip to be shown at the correct position as and when it was available rather than flickering up and down but here the entire ui is dependent on this use layout effect basically this entire browser painting of this gsx element of this dom element is dependent once this calculation is complete so first what i'll do is i'll just comment this part this is nothing but an expensive calculation that i've added here to simulate what's going to happen with and without it so right now there's nothing in the use layout effect which means it's going to execute as soon as possible which means we're going to get to see the button increment right away so if i refresh you can see the screen refreshes and we get to see the increment button right away let me refresh the screen again you can see we get to see it right away but now if i uncomment this just notice the delay if i refresh you see it's refreshing there's still no button increment up until now because it's waiting for this calculation to be complete and once it's completed now the increment button is visible so it means it blocked the painting of the browser until the use layout effect completed its expensive calculation all right so that's why in the docs they have explicitly mentioned many times that use layout effect can hurt performance and prefer use effect when possible all right so that is all about use layout effect and how it can help you solve the flickering ui situation in your applications so that's all for this video if you found it insightful don't forget to drop a like and subscribe for more